A brand new report in Axios exposes juicy new details about the president's incredible shrinking schedule. Quote, the schedule says Trump has executive time in the Oval Office every day from 8 a.m. to 11. But the reality is he spends that time in the residence, watching TV, making phone calls, and yes, thank God, tweeting. Trump's days in the Oval Office are relatively short, from around 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., then he's back to the residence. During that time, he usually has a meeting or two, but spends a good deal of time making phone calls and watching cable news in the dining room adjoining the Oval. Then he's back to the residence for more phone calls and, yes, more TV. The panel and David Jolly are all still here. Um, Peter Baker, this was amazing to read in print, but not particularly unobvious based on all of the um, commentary that he provides about things that you could only know if you were watching that much cable television. Yeah, he tells us he doesn't watch television, but uh, he live it's, tweets. It's Fox. really hard not to. The, the, the mental health tweet that came out of the weekend came ten minutes after a Fox segment on media questioning his mental stability. So it was very clear, you know, cause and effect. Um, I, I don't have any independent reporting on this. The White House is pushing back, saying he works very hard, and this is a false report. But it is clear that John Kelly, as the chief of staff, had wanted to get him to the office earlier because they felt like once he was at the office, they could have meetings, they could have briefings, they could do things that would keep him off Twitter, that would help him be better informed as a president, and that he clearly seems to be losing that battle uh, if this report about his schedule is exactly right. I had heard from a... Uh someone who had been in the White House and said, Kelly said to the person, you want to go see the president? And the president and the person said, well, isn't he busy? And, and Kelly literally said, well, he has no schedule. Um, that's, that's what's there. And what's interesting in your setup, I thought for the first time about the word tweet, going back to all of our previous segments in terms of mental stability, what a gift it is, because without the tweeting, yeah. you could there, there would be a shield around all this. Mm -hmm. I mean, the tweets right now, which all of us go, oh my, take the tweet, it takes the tweets away are actually the world's best friend, because that's the transparency that, that's being shown. It's so interesting you say that. Um, David Jolly, uh, J Jim Vandehei, one of the founders of Axios, someone I've known as long as I've known Peter Baker because he covered the Bush White House then at the Washington Post. He and I on TV got into it about why, why I cover the tweets. And he said, just ignore them. And I made the point Donnie just made. They are the only truly unfiltered, contemporaneous notes on this presidency that we have. So... Um, as troubling as they are, they are invaluable, no? They are, and they're damning. Listen, you only question a president's allocation of time uh, when his numbers are down and his disapproval is up. When the American people are questioning his ability to govern, that's when you question the president's time. Sure, you can take cheap shots into what does it cost to send Air Force One to a golf course or to Hawaii <laughs> or so forth. But when we really are damning a president's allocation, time is because we don't approve of what he's doing. The tweets are his, is the singular glimpse into his soul, and we know that. And we see his immaturity, we see his lack of competence, we see his lack of command of policy, we see his irascibility, and we see his own self-contradiction. We see his undermining of his own cabinet secretaries. We see his own declarations of war. The tweets are policy, and the, the administration has suggested that they are statements of policy, and there's no apology to get us past that. Real quick. Everything he does seems to be an overcompensation. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really smart. I'm really, really stable. I'm really, really busy. If he was actually doing these things, he wouldn't have the need to say them. And what's so disturbing about all this is we are almost a year into a presidency, and we don't know what this guy does all day. Mm -hmm. There's a country to run. There is a world to lead, and he doesn't seem to be doing that and job. That's what frightens is, He has about. what a CEO's explanation should be is, hey, look what, there's no, there's very little ISIS, 25,000 Dow, 4% unemployment. I'm building the infrastructure. Count the hours, call me what you want, this is what's getting done. And he's got a simple message that the ultimate messenger can't even understand that shuts everything up. All right. Up next, it would take a celebrity bigger than Donald